Before soundproofing a wall, the most important thing that you should know is that there's probably a lot more noise coming through the door than the actual wall. And in this video, I'll show you a bunch of ways on how to do it on a budget. And since everybody has a different budget, I'll start with the most inexpensive way, well really the free way, all the way up to the more expensive way on soundproofing that door. First thing that you should do before spending any money is make sure that your door closes tightly. A lot of noise comes through the sides, the top and the bottom because there is a lot of air leak. One way to find out if there is a lot of air and noise coming through the sides, top and bottom is to turn off all the lights except for the light in the opposite room, close the door and see if you can see a lot of light shining through the sides, top and bottom. If there is, there are ways on just fixing that without spending any money. Just make sure that your little casing where the door closes is tight. As you can see, this one is not. So all I'm using is a few small nails, a hammer, tighten it that back up. And the thing is, you can adjust it a little bit forward. If your door is quite wobbly when it closes, just bring it forward a bit, fasten it back up, see if it closes tightly, and that should help with noise. But before spending any money, do that and see if that helps. If it helps, but you can still see light, the next thing that you should do is buy acoustical caulking or something similar. Anytime that you have the word acoustic or soundproofing in any types of products, it just raises the price. So there are different products that work similarly. The difference between just regular caulking that is not silicone is that it stays rubbery over time. And that's important because as you open and close the door, you might get cracks in the other types of caulking. Now, acoustical caulking, you don't have that. It's guaranteed to just stay rubbery and sealed. But there are alternatives that you can use that are made of silicone that are only three, four dollars a tubes. I'll have links in the description below of any products that I talk about in this video to make it a lot easier. And you can just use this type of caulking instead of soundproofing or acoustical caulking. The places that you'd add the caulking is around the door casing just to seal that crack and around where you just added the nails. Just make sure that is all sealed, that small casing, and you'll see a difference. Now, if your door is still wobbly after you close it, the next thing that you should do is add a thin weather strip. Now, not a big weather strip, the types that you'd put in cars because your door will just not close very tightly. The one I recommend is just a thin weather strip that separates and it works pretty well. The ones that I use is also self-adhesive. The only thing is just make sure the surface is clean and dry before applying the weather strip because a lot of the times it'll just fall off and that's the reason why there was a little bit of dust. So just add the weather strip on that small casing and if you find that the door doesn't close properly because of that, then you can adjust the small casing and make sure the door closes tightly. Now once you've added the weather strip and the caulking, well you shouldn't see any light coming through the top and both sides of the door. Next thing that you'll want to do is seal the gap at the bottom of the door. Now yes it will restrict airflow. So the door sweep that I recommend is a U-shape door sweep. These ones just come in one size, you can cut them to size and you just slide it in and you don't have to permanently attach it to the door. So you can just slide it in and out if you only need to have the door completely sealed for a few hours a day if you're just doing something. But if airflow, not a problem because of ventilation in the room already, you can just leave it right there. You can even screw it right into the door so it's there permanently, no problem. And what's nice, even if you're renting, you can do these things and actually most of the stuff on this list you can do even if you're renting. Now the door is completely sealed. If that's not enough, you can change your hollow core door to a solid core door. Most interior doors are hollow and will let more noise in than having a more solid door. If you've ever opened one of these doors up, you'll see that they're not actually completely hollow. Usually a cardboard honeycomb just so the door stays intact. The door stays solid, even though it's not solid. Now what you can do is just swap your hollow core door for a solid core door. Now these doors are about double the price, so they'd be about between $50 and $150, depending on what type of door that you want. This is not really something that you'd want to do if you're renting, but if you own your home, then that's something that you can do. Now, a solid core door is what it is. It's solid, but it's not solid wood. It's usually made of some type of compressed sawdust inside, but it will let less noise in through the door than a hollow core door. So that's one thing that you can do, which is quite easy and DIY. 
Now, the next three things are quite similar, but difference in price. The first are moving blankets. Adding moving blankets on the door will block some noise. Moving blankets are quite heavier and denser than just regular blankets, and they're only about $15 to $20 per blanket. What I would suggest is sewing a strip of Velcro onto the moving blankets and the other side of the Velcro onto the door frame. So when you close the door, if you don't want noise to come through, just doing that and sealing it up will help a lot more than just hanging it over the door and having that big gap all around the door where it's just hanging. Next one is a thermal door panel. Now these are more for heat and cold transfer, but they are quite thick and they do help with blocking sound. Now these things, just like the blankets, also deadens sound inside the room. So a lot of people would use that if you have a recording studio. So it works at blocking a little bit of noise from going through the door and also it makes, it absorbs noise and makes the, the sound in the room sound better. And also it reduces the echoes inside the room so it helps with acoustics inside a room. So it works in a few ways. And these thermal panels are around $80. Another thing that you can add to the door is a soundproof or sound deadening door panel. Now these are usually custom made and they are extremely heavy and they do block quite a lot of noise, more so than I thought it would. I did a sound test on one of these panels a few years back. I'll leave the link in the description below of that sound test and you can hear for yourself. It was quite heavier than I thought. These things are packed with a lot of soundproofing and sound deadening material including insulation and mass loaded vinyl and other stuff in it just to block the noise so it is a little bit more than just adding some blankets over the door but it does work quite well at blocking more noise than I thought and actually deadening the noise inside the room these things can cost between two to three to four hundred dollars depending on the type and the size of the door that you have you can go a lot cheaper also and just buy some sound deadening curtains. You can buy just one big sound deadening curtain panel. Now these types of curtains have three layers usually. The middle part is a black felt and it's more for blocking light because they usually call these types of curtains blackout curtains, but they do block a little bit of sound. So you can use that, but it will not work as well as a dedicated soundproofing or sound deadening door panel. Number nine is something like weather stripping around the door, but it goes a lot further than that. This is around 50 to $60 and it's a door seal kit. Now these types of metal and rubber seal kits, they do work a lot better. I did a sound test on one of these seal kits a few weeks ago or a few videos ago and it works quite well. It is around $50, $60. It is more permanent because you have to drill them right into the door casing. So, but if you're renting, that shouldn't stop you because you can just buy some spackle, some mud and add those into the holes and holes are gone. Landlord will never know. Nobody cares. And you can just use them in your next home. Next one is if you are going to be changing the door, it wouldn't be a bad idea to buy some soundproofing door hinges. Now these door hinges are a little bit more expensive than regular ones because they, there's absolutely no cracks or gaps where sound could go in, whether your hinge is open or closed. Now a lot of the times this is not necessary, but if you are going to go and spend a lot of money on a dedicated soundproof door, a solid wood door let's say, then it's not a bad idea to actually look into hinges because you will need to upgrade the hinges if you go ahead and buy a solid wood door, which is better at blocking noise than a solid core door. But a solid wood door is quite expensive. Depending on the ones you want, you can go from a few hundred dollars to well over a thousand dollars for a solid wood door. But it does block a lot more noise and it is worth it for a lot of people, especially if you are recording music or podcasting in the room and you really can't handle having noise come in and out of the room. You can go even a step further and install a fiberglass door. Now these types of door will block a little bit more noise, they're a little bit more expensive, but you do have a fiberglass core, much like a lot of front doors and back doors, exterior doors, a lot of them are made of fiberglass, And but you can buy fiberglass doors for inside your home, but that will block more noise than just a solid core door. But again, it will cost around the same amount of money as a solid wood door. It all depends on the look, the style, 
and the size of door that you're going to buy. But all of these different doors are a few hundred dollars all the way up to well over a thousand dollars or more depending again on the size. The next one is not so much to block noise but it's if you close the door and the latch always makes a noise. You know when you close the door you have, you have that click and if you have a nursery or just somebody sleeping and it always wakes them up. A lot of people buy door mufflers or door silencers. You just attach them right on the doorknob and problem solved right there. Few dollars, four dollars. I should have put that number one, but I didn't really want to start the video with that, I guess. But it could work excellent if you have a nursery. One thing that doesn't really work in soundproofing the door is adding acoustic foam onto the backing of the door. A lot of people say that that's how you soundproof a door, but that's not really how you soundproof a door. What it'll do, it'll deaden the noise inside the room. If you are going to spend 25 bucks to buy a bunch of these acoustic foam, then you might as well just spend the money and buy a moving blanket, or so a couple of moving blankets for the same price, and it will block more noise than adding a few of these. But it does work at deadening a little bit of the noise, but you, you just won't really be happy with the results if you add a few of these onto the door, thinking that your door is now going to be soundproof. Adding heavier, denser material onto the door will do a better job than adding acoustic foam onto the door. If you're trying to soundproof your front door because of a lot of traffic and road noise, one thing that you can do is add a storm door. That's one thing that I did a long time ago when I lived in an older house. We added a storm door just because it was in the winter. There was a lot of snow just packing onto the door. So we wanted a separation. But one thing that I did notice is that it blocked a lot of the noise from the road coming inside the home. So that's one thing that you should do before going ahead and spending maybe a thousand dollars and changing your front door to a more solid door, then going ahead and buying just a storm door for a hundred dollars could make a difference. So after utilizing some of these methods and hopefully saving some money and not having to soundproof a wall or soundproof the room just because most of the noise is coming through the door, hopefully you have that figured out. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you, even if it's a nasty comment. I love those as well. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time.